guys, today we're going to cook uh, red, red lentils, or uh, some people call them rose lentils. It's 145, I'll write that down in a minute, but I just wanted to acquaint you with red lentils. They cook so fast that um, it's really, um, really unbelievable, and they're very tasty. And for people who aren't bean people, legume people, this is the really the next best thing because they cook down to almost nothing and they just provide a wonderful base for various soups and stews and vegetables and you don't even know they're there. One cup of this has 52 grams of protein in it. And if you calculate your protein needs from the Physicians Committee on Responsible Medicine, you will find out, so that's Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine dot org, you'll find out that the calculation for re recommended protein is, it's your body weight, times, oh, oh, three, six, so it's point three, so I'm going to write down, our start time is 1.45, and I've, uh, one cup of these red lentils is 52 grams of protein. And I just want to tell you a little bit more about the rose lentil, or red lentil. This pack, I think it costs $2.50. We're going to have uh, half of it, one cup, so it's about a dollar and a quarter. Rose lentil is the inside of whole lentils. Some people call them Mediterranean lentils, uh, French lentils, but if these were, uh, the skin was taken off, you would find inside that it's pink. And then that's this. So it's just a fantastic source of protein. So our, our menu is going to be red lentils, uh, medium onion, which I already started, uh, some diced tomatoes. I just buy diced tomatoes and I just make sure that it doesn't have other seasonings in it like garlic, unless if you want the garlic, that's fine. About two inches of ginger, which is just a few cents. I'll probably take this piece, dice it up, oil and salt. And uh, red chilies are optional. I almost always add them. And of course water. So the uh, most time consuming part of this is here I buy my, I buy all my lentils in bulk and I keep them in these plastic containers. And these plastic containers I get from the recycling bins. On Thursday we have recycling and I go around to see who's throwing out, usually get pretzels in here and people don't keep them. And to me these are extremely valuable. So the first thing you do is measure and sort. I'm looking for little stones and little sticks. I'm just going to use one cup. And the water you have to eyeball it yourself, but I'll start out, after I wash them, I'll start out with two cups of water because it's a stew. If you made this into a broth, then you would add much more water. And if you made it into a soup, you'd add more let me enter the phone. Okay, so my telephone call's done. Um, it's 151. I'm just going to rinse these and start them cooking. So I've measured them. I've eyeballed them for sticks and stones. And uh, just going to rinse While these are cooking, I'll chop up the onion and ginger. I usually save this water and put it on the plants outside. I always do that, actually. See the water's still cloudy. So you can make three, actually four things. You can make a nice dessert with uh, rose lentils as well. So that means your broth, soup, stew, or dessert is chock full of protein and of course a lot of other things too, including fiber. And as far as fat and salt goes, uh, you, you decide how much of that goes in. You are in control of the salt and other things. I, I might add, uh, if you're transitioning from meat to legumes to a plant-based diet, you can add more s oil and salt than you otherwise would because just by leaving dairy and cheese and meat behind, you're giving up a lot of fat already. So in your transition, at least that's my humble opinion. I think I just need to rinse it one more time. Thank you. Thank you.
Ja, det kan vi då. Så det. Så det är på det bush later on. And for now, because this is a stew, put only two cups of water. And the reason I use tap water, I live in a place where I have good public water. And I feel very lucky for that. This is outside. I'll watch it. And it's starting to cook at 155. So uh, I did a lot of talking and I took a call. So 155 just to have my eyes. But two lessons is legumes, cook them completely until they're done. Then add anything you're going to add to them. Um, if you introduce uh, anything acidic, including tomatoes, uh, lemon, other items, salt, it causes the skin on legumes to tighten and it doesn't let the water get in. And that's why you get hard beans. Now, because the skin is off of uh, this particular bean, it's not the case, but it's a good habit. I just, when I cook legumes, I cook them completely till they're done and then I add the other in. So this brown skin would tighten up if I added salt or acidic things to it and it would just stay kind of hard if, even if I cooked them for 14 days. The second lesson is oil transfers and spices. It disperses it. So I cook everything I cook in it with oil. I happen to use sesame. You can use whatever type you like. One, two, three, four, five, six, oil. And this is cooking. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, I'll just fry out my chili. We do use a lot of oil. Use much chili. While that's frying, I will chop these up. We use a lot of ginger. Ginger freezes really well. So I buy this big thing. And uh, when I have time, I chop it up, I stick it in a bottle, and I freeze it. I don't have any frozen now to show you, so I'm going to chop up uh, fresh peas. It doesn't change the taste at all. Ginger is often, sometimes it's in recipes, they might say a tablespoon or inches. So I'm taking about two inches of ginger. Okay, so I feel my ginger like this. It's a little foamy on top, it's no problem. This goes well with uh, whole wheat chapatis, which are like pitas, or whole wheat bread, or white rice. It goes well with a lot of things. But the important thing is it's a really satisfying hot meal uh, that you can make very fast, and it freezes well. Oh, it's 2 p.m. It's continuing to cook. Okay, so again, the oil disseminates the flavor, so I just wanted to fry it a little bit. Put them aside. Now I'm going to put in here, the chop it. Two inches comes to about one, two. So I about three tablespoons. But uh, you judge for yourself how much you like. Now I'm going to cover this just so it's not burning all over. And again, frying it not to cook it as much as to disseminate the flavor because once we pour the oil into the legumes the flavor really disseminates. I'm going to close that up. You see it's boiling now. And that foam is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just going to make sure nothing's stuck on the bottom. Now that I know it's boiled, it's going to get ready to boil over. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. I do want it to continue to boil, but I don't want it to boil over. It almost always happens. As soon as I turn, it boils over. So now I'm just going to be frying up, or dicing up my onions. And then I'll fry them up. Okay. Still finishing. So these are done. You'll notice as you cook with these, some recipes you really like to get the ginger caramelized, meaning a nice dark brown. That's not the case with this particular recipe, so it's fine. I'm just going to put it here. This is what you call setting it aside. We'll put it uh, in the legumes a little bit later. I'll add a little bit more um, oil, maybe one tablespoon more, a little bit less. Frying up the onions. This also, I don't want them caramelized. I just want them uh, translucent. So this is really a versatile legume because you 
let's say you love cumin, it takes it goes well with cumin or rosemary or sage or whatever. So we have about two cups of onion. Right. This time I'll add my salt. It's been really muggy here and my salt's gotten all wet. But it's about a teaspoon. So here's the rose lentil. Really nearly done. If you were to taste this, you would know that it's done, cooked. I'll take some out and we'll examine it in a little bit. You can see having two cups of water boils down to a nice amount for this stew. Again, if we were doing a broth, we would have probably six cups of water and then some salt and parsley. That's almost like chicken broth, to be honest. And it tastes almost like matzo ball soup uh, broth, the broth part. If you had a soup, you'd probably have four cups water to make it more soupy, but this is great. I'm going to keep it cooking. I can just turn down the heat. See, it's on it in 211. So I put it on at 145. I think I started this at 155, so it's just about 15 minutes. And we're going to take a look at this. So if you were able to see it and taste it and manipulate it, you'd see that it's, for all practical purposes, it's cooked. And that's the beauty of this rose lentil full of protein, it's not even beany for people who don't like beans, and full of fiber. A, a quarter cup is 38% of the daily value of the fiber you should get. So a quarter cup gives you 9 grams of fiber, and a quarter cup gives you 13 grams of protein. Of course we need to multiply that times 4 because we had a cup. It isn't just, um, Fine, so it's translucent. Now, uh, as far as the tomato goes, that also depends on how much you like. So, I happen to have a can open in my fridge that's here. I'm going to start out with a half a cup because I do it uh, visually. Some people love uh, tomatoes like I do and others don't. And my husband isn't that crazy about it. So that's why I... Uh, do it visually. If it's very, very red, <laughs> then I hold back. Now, one optional ingredient I use here is my husband loves cumin, so I'm going to add cumin. I will put in about a little less than a teaspoon. So here's my teaspoon. Again, this is optional. Let's get this ready. And cumin is helpful if you what they call bruise the cumin. So you bruise it so that the taste uh, gets out. If you don't have this, of course, a, uh, a bowl with a spoon works just fine. No need to go buy this. And the idea is just to bruise it a little bit. I'll fry that in in a minute too. So everything's ready. It's on here. 215. My red lentils are cooked. Uh, medium onions here is cooked. Diced tomatoes I'm going to take care of in a minute. Ginger is cooked. My red chilies are cooked. And I've added salt. So only because these uh, these are ready. Remember, as soon as I, I put this in there, these the beans, the legumes, stop softening. So you want to make sure that they are at the consistency you want them to be. And these definitely are uh, cooked. Your red lentils, rose lentils are cooked. I'm going to 
put my... I'm going to start out by just putting white and red chili in there because if it's too hot then you can't undo it. And these are cooking up. I'm going to throw them in. Uh, now, depending on the consistency you want, you might want more water. You can add that now. But because this is a stew, you'll, uh, this is, happens to be perfect consistency. If you have a rice, you know, rice, you just throw this over the rice. Now, we're going to put a little bit more oil in here. Teeny bit. Because uh, I want to fry up my cumin. The oil disseminates the seasoning. You can test it out sometime and put your seasoning straight into there. It's really quite different. Having them fry up in a little bit of oil makes all the difference. So they're fried up and the oil will spread throughout. Now one last task. I'm going to uh, again cook these up just a little bit separately and it take some of the sourness away. If sourness bothers you, it doesn't bother me. Some people it does. This is continuing to cook. This meal cost about one twenty five plus these various things, so about two dollars. And it has about fifty two grams of protein in here. And this with uh, rice yeah, is a, a perfect meal. I, I put in a half a cup in here and I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to see how much we wind up using. Okay. And it's uh, 219 and we're almost done. I want you to see this. Now, my husband doesn't like it to turn completely red. You see, you see some dots, and that's the way he likes it. But you check it out with your family, how they like it. And because these are the diced tomatoes, they don't color completely red. I'm going to take a taste. And I think it's ready. It's 2.20, and I'll take a taste. Um, it definitely needs more salt. And I'm going to let it simmer just a little bit more. I have to have some coriander leaves, which I'll put on top just before serving it. But for now, this is done. So this is the rose lentil too. It's done. Here it is. I hope you learned something, and if you make it, send me pictures of your meal. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, Sadie. Hi, Well, I guess uh, a few things have fixed. Hi, Daisy. There you go. Hi, Daisy girl. Everyone likes to eat. So, we're serving this with non-glutinous millet. We get it at the Korean store. Millet also has a lot of protein. For one ounce of this, there's three grams of protein. It's called non-glutinous. Here it is in the rice cooker. I, s I fluffed it up a little bit, but it, it cooks up really nice and fluffy. And I'll show you separately how to make that. But again, it's just two to one in a rice cooker or in a pan with some salt. We're also serving this with frozen green peas. These are just plain frozen green peas. Three ounces of these 
gives you one, four grams of protein. So again, there's a lot of protein in these frozen green peas. I just microwave them, but you can also, you know, simmer them in a pan in some water on uh, on the stove top. So, and we're also serving this meal with whole wheat roti. I get these at our international store. They're just like pitas without the pocket, and they're vegan. They're whole wheat, so if gluten is a problem for you, then you probably wouldn't want this. But it has uh, three grams of protein in one of these. So I, uh, again, I stick this in the microwave and warm it up. You can also warm it up on the stove top quickly, or not at all. But I buy a whole lot of these at our international store, because I live off of them, and uh, freeze them. There's no oil or fat in here, no oil or fat in here, and none here in these frozen green peas. To have about four tablespoons in this dish. The stew. I happen to have some coriander in the fridge, so I'm using it, but if I didn't have any, I wouldn't use it. So with this meal, which is under two dollars, you've controlled your own salt input and your own fat oil. So here's what it looks like, and I hope you enjoy it.